get into some of the points that I was asked. Uh, hi, Kat. How do you actually get over the person if they are constantly in your space? Can't escape in any way because the girl he did the things with is in my class. That is terrible. That is terrible. The unfortunate thing is you can't now stop going to school because the girl he did things with is in your class. You have to get... This is the point where, especially if you're working with that person and whatever, you have to be the bigger person at this point. And it's hard. That's not going to be easy at all. Okay? I had to be the bigger person when this side piece of his was running her mouth about me. And I was just like, you know what? It's fine. I'm not going to stoop to this level. So what you need to do is just tell yourself that, you know what? It happened. The moment happened, but I deserve to be in this class or at this job or at whatever. And I will not give them. I will not give them that little krach to feel like they have broken me to such a point that I am, you know, it's visible. Now I need to take days off from school or from class or whatever. You just need to dissociate. You're going to see that girl. And it's unfortunate because I can't say leave school and go somewhere else. You're going to see that girl. You're going to see him potentially in some uh, mutual situations. It's unfortunate, but I, all you can do is have this conversation with yourself. You need to dissociate. That was the past. That was the past. That was a previous moment of your life. It's over and you're trying to move on. Look, move on. Literally, you have to talk to yourself and you have to talk yourself through it each and every single day until it doesn't matter anymore. And it's so unfortunate that you have to do this, but you kind of have to do it until it doesn't matter anymore. So you just need to dissociate yourself mentally and physically from what has just happened you can't run away from school you can't quit your job and go to another one if you can if you can if you can and you really can't do it not the school one more so the job one if you can and you really wanted to change jobs and whatever then do it do whatever it will take for you to get peace of mind from this here breakup. But with school, it's a little bit more tricky. With a job and you feel like, ah, oh, you know what? I've been wanting to change this job anyway and whatever. I need a fresh new start and whatever. People do it all the time. They move cities. They change jobs. They do whatever and they start a new life and a fresh life. You can do that. But if at school, it's a little bit more tricky. You're not going to leave Vits and then go to UCT for the sake of a gent. A gent. And the side piece, never that. Never that. The side piece is the one who must shake when she sees you. It mustn't be an issue of, hey, what, 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 what. You must know who the fuck you are. The side piece must be the one who's just like, shoo. Even though side pieces have no shame nowadays, I can tell you that for free, okay? But they must shake, not you. Not you, baby girl. You need to have that conversation with yourself to be like, you know what? I got this. It's fine. We're going to move forward. It's, a, it's, it's, my, it's my past. It's my life. It's a past. Now is now. Now is now. Hi, Katleo. When your ex that you still love comes back and wants to try again, but you don't trust them at all, what do you do? I feel like you've answered your question. They want to come back and try again, but you don't trust them. So why would you allow somebody into your space, into your heart again that you don't trust? Why would you do that to yourself? Make me understand why would you do that to yourself? You don't trust that person. So you're not over. You haven't made peace with everything that has happened. You're probably never going to trust them for the rest of your life. But why would you bring someone into a space where already the trust is questionable, is questioned? It's going to be so difficult because I've tried to work things out with somebody after they've hurt me. And let me tell you something. You're a very different version of yourself. I can tell you that right now for free. You're meaner. You are. You're meaner. You snap more. You don't trust them. You're constantly calling them, blowing up their phone, doing this, this, this. You're just not yourself anymore. So why would you allow that person back into your space when you know that you still don't trust them? I'm trying to unlock my phone with my face, chat. It's not a good idea. And also, I love him, but he's no longer my dream partner because he's now a baby daddy to two different women. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying?
okay? Uh, hi, Kat. Please talk about flashbacks of terrible breakups, even though you have moved on and are in a healthy relationship. Please talk about how to train your mind not to expect the worst just because of what you've experienced in the past. This is a really great question because I have flashbacks as well. I had. I don't have them anymore. But I used to have flashbacks when I got into the current relationship that I am in. And because of the flashbacks, those flashbacks automatically brought on triggers as well. So every time I would have a flashback of what he did to hurt me, and maybe my current partner does something similar where maybe I call him and he doesn't answer his phone on a Saturday evening, I'm triggered. I'm already instantly triggered. I'm just like, who, who, who? And I'm at the point where I'm about to scream and shout and throw my toys out the cot. And then 15 minutes later, after I call him, he calls me and he says, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I was busy doing this, this, this. I'm sorry. Yeah, what's up? You were saying. And it's like, Kakao, <sighs> no, no. What we're not going to do is bring that behavior into this here space, right? So dealing with those flashbacks is the one thing that I would say is do not instantly react. If you have a flashback, and you are currently in a new relationship and you have a flashback of your old one, don't instantly react. Allow yourself to have the flashback, but then drop it. After that, let it go, drop it. It's a flashback, that's all it is. This person, this new person, what have they done that could potentially make you question them, question their love for you, tr question uh, your trust when it comes to them, what have they done? If they haven't done anything, remind yourself of that every single time you have the flashback. If you have flashback of good moments that you've had with your ex, right? That's fine, allow it to happen. I had flashbacks. I thought about him from time to time, about the moments where we would laugh together and blah, 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 and talk about this and, you know, throw out, you know, ideas, you know, goals, dreams, all of that. I would think about things like that. But then after that, I drop it and you let it go, especially when you're with someone new, because this person that you're with now deserves all of you. They don't deserve the you that's, 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 that's there, but then sometimes still has flashbacks and still thinks about the other person and whatever. It's human. I get it, but drop it and let it go. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. Do not instantly react. I reacted. A number of times and it caused me and my current partner to get into disagreements because I would react because he didn't answer his phone or I would react because this is this or I would react because you know this girl was looking at him some type of way and then I lost my shit and I was just like Get up, but why right so before you do any of that allow it to happen then drop it it's hard not to train your mind it's hard to train your mind to switch off from what you have experienced in the past uh, with the new relationship. But you have to remember that the two people are different. Those people are very different. Remind yourself, for what has this new partner done to make me not trust them? What have they done to, you know, make me question, you know, uh, their love for me? If they haven't done anything, remind yourself of those things each and every single day. In that way, it'll help you move forward. It'll help your mind formulate that, that resolute to see that, oh, you know what? Nah, uh-uh. I'm not going to put him through this. I'm not going to put him through this, right? And it's really, really important. It's hard, but it's something that you just have to do each and every single day. You have to put it into your mind each and every single day that I am not going to make him pay for the sins of this one. I'm not. And therapy, always a great idea. Writing things down, always a great idea. Because I'm not a therapist. I'm not going to tell you what you can and can't do in terms of training your mind and all of that, right? But writing things down, communicating with your partner about what your triggers are is so important. I had this conversation with my current partner, what my triggers are. And he knows that if I'm going to call you on a Saturday night and you with your friends and you doing breakfast runs and whatever, or a Saturday morning, look, if you don't answer the phone, I'm going to need you to call me back within half an hour. <laughs> okay? If he's not at work, I'm going to need him to call me back within, a, with, you know, because it's a trigger for me. 
So you have to work through it with your current partner. Speak to your partner about it. Speak to him about it. It'll help. It'll help. How do you get yourself to love again, as in truly love, without the pressure of uh, having to move on and prove to yourself that you've moved on? I just feel like you'll never allow yourself to love the way you did after a breakup. You can. You can allow yourself to love. But I feel like you have to have done the work to break up, to move forward, to let that previous relationship go right you have to take it small it's small steps it really is small steps you can't force yourself or push yourself to love somebody if you do not love somebody you don't love somebody i met a bunch of people after my previous relationship and i dated and whatever and i met you i met a bunch of great gents <laughs> but i didn't love them I didn't feel a connection to them. Let me tell you something about when you meet somebody that your heart will love. It will happen. You have no control over that, okay? It will happen where you know you wake up in the morning and you're thinking about this person. You're just like, oh my God, let me call him. Let me text him. You know, you just become softer and fluffier. It happens without your control. Do not focus so much on I really want to love this guy. He's so nice to me. He treats me really well. He takes me out. He does this, this. I really want to love him. That means then you don't love him. And you're probably not going to love him. Because, oh, we can cost him. Because, <laughs> because it means you really don't love him. You're not going to get to that point. Yeah, understand that. So all you need to do is just allow love to happen. Don't think about it. Really, don't think about it. Allow love to happen, and it'll happen. Um, whew, dealing with painful breakups, coming from the middleman. How do you tell your friend or sister that they're actually better off without this person, without making them feel like their feelings of heartbreak aren't validated? This is really difficult because, one, you cannot... You have to tread very carefully with trying to show your sister or your friend that they're better off without this person. You have to tread carefully because they probably still love them, right? I feel like do not say anything initially. Don't be quick to say, ah, ah he doesn't deserve you, what, 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 you're better off without him. First and foremost, I do not think words like that are conducive to somebody who's going through a breakup. You're better off without him. They probably know that they are, okay? They don't need you to tell them that they're better off without them. They are just not in the space where they can hear those words. They are just not in the space where they believe it. Even if they know that they are, they don't believe it. Like I said with me, I questioned myself a lot and I was just like, maybe I did this and whatever. They are not in that space as yet. All you can do is just be there and support them without judging them. Well, I'm not saying you're judging them, but without making any judgments or comments that are along those lines, okay? Support them, and then once you feel like they're in a better space, then you tell them that, you know what, I'm proud of you. Never tell them that you deserve better and whatever and whatever. That's not, I feel like that's not our place. It really isn't, okay? I just feel like, um, you know, Give them confidence. Tell them that you're proud of them for standing up for themselves <clears throat> and that they deserve a love that is richer and bolder and louder and, you know, that is caring for them and all of that. Don't ever tell them that they deserve better than what they... I just feel like it's a, it's a little bit inappropriate. Be very, very careful about what you say uh, when you are talking to somebody who's just gone through a heartbreak. Be very, very careful about what you say. I'm sorry. Hello? I'm recording! Okay, Miss Mama. Hey, girl. You look cheap for someone who said, I'm sorry, I'd be eating on Diego Grand. Good girl, if you could hear my voice right now, it's a mess. Hey. Yeah. I'm so sorry about that. That was my sister. So basically, I think you just need to be really, really careful about what you say to somebody who's just gone through a breakup, okay? In cases where there's a child involved, how do you go about healing without feeling like you have to cut the child's father out of your life? You, the healing process is yours, and it's yours alone. And this has nothing to do with the father of the child or the child. You can heal and allow the child to see the father or the father to see the child. You cannot 
that you you really you you really cannot be um it has nothing to do with you. You share this child with this person, right? You really cannot put your child in a position where they feel like they have to choose between mom and dad because now you are... I feel like I cannot respect women who, because they've gone through a heartbreak, right, with the father of the child, now they make it hard. They put the child in the middle of the chess game. Now the child is a pawn to the relationship with the dad and whatever. I cannot respect women who do that. I cannot respect parents who do that. Whether it's a man or a woman, you cannot put the child in the middle of the heartbreak and what you went through with the father of the child. You heal, you go through what you need to go through, follow the steps that I said in the beginning of the video, but then allow the child to see their father and vice versa. This has nothing to do with you. At this point, you cannot deprive the child of seeing their father because when are you are mad at him? No, 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 no. That's pretty much where I'm going to end it. This is going to be a very, very long video. I hope you have subscribed and you have joined the JK family. And I'm so glad that you are here. Let us get to 30,000 subscribers before we get to June. Guys, please, I'm really hoping that you can help me here. Reshare, repost, retweet, all of that. That stuff helps get my name out there. It really helps get my name out there. Until then, I'm going to go. My voice is already starting to change up a bit. Uh, I'm going to go, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, 